Okay everyone, it's Thursday night and I need to get back at this and uh, we had some uh, fuel delivery issues the last video. Um, I believe it could be a plug fuel filter or a bad fuel pump, but I'm going to go with bad fuel filter. So And it broke my tripod, so this is going to suck. So let's get her uncovered and get at her. Okay, so I got her uncovered. Um, you seen the last video I had trouble with the it running and uh, running out of fuel so um, it was running b good before that so uh, in some of my videos you've seen my makeshift gas tank now I'm starting to think that that picked up some dirt in there so we're gonna take the fuel filter out first and I'm probably gonna put either put one of those little cartridge ones back in or I'm gonna put an inline one down here a clear inline one might be better because then you can see if there's no fuel there or not so uh, first things first, let's take this off 5 8 and a 1 inch and take that filter out and see what we have in there. Okay, I'm going to have to excuse the angle guys, I broke my tripod. My wrench is too now, what you want to do is uh, take this out um, and if you just want to check it, you can spin the, your engine over. I was going to say truck, but it's not a truck, but anyway, spin your engine over and uh, your fuel should come squirting, well, flowing out, squirting out. Um, you could put a pressure gauge on it too as well. To be 100% sure. So I got that disconnected. Next step is to crank it over and to see what you got. And I find my keys. Hang on. Okay, so uh, make sure your spark plug wires or anything that will make a spark is away. Um, make sure your fuel line is in your tank, which I am not. Apparently, just a minute. Okay, so when I crank this over, it should have fuel up there. Let's give her. You see, I have lots. Now I'm not going to keep cranking it. Um, so the fuel filler is probably the culprit. So we're going to go ahead and take this out. If I can find my one-inch wrench, which I can't seem to find right now, um, I may be able to get it out with a little bit bigger or an adjustable would probably be better. Okay, so the problem with these filters when you're not uh, running the vehicle is often too is they dry up and they seem to plug up more. So we're going to pull this out. The fuel kind of smells funny. Now there's a spring underneath there. Make sure that stays in there because you're going to need it when you put your new filter on it. You can see the filter doesn't look bad. It's got a little check valve in there. And uh, if I'm in frame or not, a lot of times that check valve gets dirt in it. It should have a screen in there to catch the bigger particles. See? There's a little check valve in there. It lets the fuel in and out. Sometimes that, I've seen that plug up. You can see there's some shit in there. And it's off kilter. You see that? It's not sitting level. Um, so I'm just going to take this check valve out and put the filter back in and see what happens. Now, a lot of the old way they had a ceramic filter in there too at one time but uh, now I'm trying not to touch my camera with my gasoline hands but it's not gonna work okay um, this is how I used to check them you can't you can see I can't blow through it so bah, premium anyway so the fuel filter is plugged I'm gonna get one of them at work but uh, to get this tank back where it belongs so I can start working on it I'm gonna put that back together no fuel filter and it should be okay. I'm going to put a, either put one of these back in it or I'm going to put an inline one. I might put, add an inline one after. I need to get this out of the way. Um, there's too many people stopping along the highway trying to buy it. So, I mean, it's not sitting that far from the highway, but if I had two or three of them, I could have sold them by now. Anyway, let's reassemble. Another thing to note, too, this piece here, it screws on the block. It actually has a not a neoprene but like a hard white plastic seal that goes on the end of this make sure that's there because if it's not it'll leak like a bastard okay okay just because i don't have a new one in here right now uh you see the check valve that goes like that inside of there like that and then make sure your spring is in there that helps push the seal the the filter into the seal or seal it off so no gas can get by okay Okay guys, not sure how this camera angle is going to work. Um, I have a uh, camera zip tied to the roll cage, so <laughs> it's the only thing I can do because I can't drive it with uh, 
one hand on the camera and my wife's gone to sleep, so. Let's see if we can get it to start. I need to make, move this back so we fix the track and everything. Have to take for another spin, but I don't want to lose the track. So, all right. Good old zip ties. I had her zip tied right here, but anyway. Um, so that next time you see it, I'm gonna have a inline fuel filter. I think I don't think I'm gonna bother with this one. And I have one uh, plastic inline here, so you can see well somewhere down here, so you can see the fuel if you run out or not. You can be able to see it. Um, yeah. So next time we we'll work on this, which should be maybe later tonight we'll see um, I'm gonna start working on the throttle I need to take care of this mess over here and as you can see the engine is now twisted in there so that means my tub well you can see it from below the tub is bent you can see it right here and I think it's bent this way here too so I'm gonna straighten this out um, and my rear transmission mount Back in here, the bolts are both stripped out of here, so I need to make some kind of horseshoe clamp thing out of threaded rod to hold on to that and tighten it down into the bottom. So we'll be, I'm probably gonna have to work off of this. I'm gonna clean this all up with a grinder. Uh, I am deeply regretting not cleaning this up before I put the motor in it, but uh, yeah, so we'll just go with what I have. Um, the shifter, I have a 1976 uh, Chevy Camaro shifter and a shorter brand new cable. I'm going to put this cable coming instead of pulling from sideways here uh, I'm going to put it on an angle probably as long as it doesn't interfere with that. You can see this thing here is out of a Toyota or something some kind of I think it's a Toyota or some foreign car like that. Anyway the cable is too long for where I want it to sit so I will be changing that so we'll put it on an angle here somewhere. You can see I think that's for the lock-up torque converter. I'm not sure. This could be an overdrive. Some of you might be able to tell me that. 5T on the side. I think it is an overdrive training. I don't know. Uh, we'll figure that out later. Um, there's some more ideas. This is what I gashed myself on last weekend. Someone cut the top of the shifter off. You can see it's quite sharp right there. And I end up with a, a gash like that, bleeding like hell. Anyway, so my plans for this is to put a shifter rod through here um, with another shifter at the front up in here somewhere so I can shift into different gears in the rear when I'm stopped into low or high so I don't have to keep jumping out so that should give me um, a couple pivot points may put it extend this a bit here and well the pivot point here and a pivot point here so you can go like this and then have it on a solid rod or I think I'm not sure how it's going to work yet. So when you lean the front shifter, it'll lean with it. And when you push it forward, it'll pivot. So that's how that's going to work, I hope. And I still have to address the brakes. Definitely want to hook this back up. Um, but my seat mounting's kind of in the way now. So I might have to, now that i got my fitting for my torches, I'll show you that in a second. Um, I think that's a Dodge. I'm going to move that on the bottom or just leave that one there and then find a Chevy one. And put it in there and then obviously if I use something like that I'm gonna have to make uh, weld spacers at the back of the pad because this rotor here is off some kind of motorbike by the looks of it and it's not thick enough but uh, yeah so we'll be doing that mounting that in the bottom there's lots of work left and not enough time <laughs> yeah so I got lots of work to do on it and I need to take this some of these track pins I have to deal with you see one here is broken it's not there before I go for another good test drive, I don't want to lose a track pin because if this track falls off, um, you can see I spray painted some of these. 
This one here is broke. This track pin is actually broke halfway. Um, yeah, so I need to take this apart. This is like a full floating axle on this thing. Someone asked me the other day what kind of rear end it had in it. Well, it's a bit older, but there's nothing in the center that holds the axle in there. It's held in, they call them full floaters, I believe, What you guys, whatever you guys want to call them. That's what we call them, the automotive, full floating axles. Um, take this off here on the outside. The axle pops out, and then you have some kind of lock ring and a, a nut to tighten the wheel bearing. And then that whole, when you take that off, this whole thing will pull off, and there should be a drum in behind there with brake shoes. You can see right here. So we need to address this too. You can see the wheel cylinder is crooked. This thing here is a Mark II number two Bren gun carrier from 1944, I believe. Well, some of the parts are anyway. If you look on the arms, I went through this before. On some of these arms here, you'll see it stamped 1944. I think it's on the other side. Anyway, I can't find the hull number because I'm not sure where to look. So if someone wants to tell me where to look, I'll gladly get it. But anyway, guys, all kinds of work left to do. Um, like I said, not enough time to do it. But we'll uh, slug away at it one thing at a time. And then uh, pretty soon we'll be crushing a car, hopefully. I think it'll go over that Lumina, no problem. The front end's kind of low, but... And this thing is still pretty heavy, so... Anyway, that's the plan. Get the throttle fixed. Um, first. And I still have to do brakes, steering, and make sure these track pins... There's a few here that are falling out. Like right there. Um, I had a guy on the weekend stop over Canada Day looking at it. He told me this track was in really good shape. I thought it was wore out, but... And so you can tell by the front here. If the tracks were out, you get it leaning more. But I'm not an expert, so I'll just take his word for it. And I uh, can still tighten it a bit, I guess. There's still a room here. It seems kind of loose on the back, but there's actually a specification for that too. Anyway, I'm rambling on again. Anyway, guys, uh, it was a short little video. Better than nothing. It had to be done. I had to move it anyway, because uh, too many people bugging is it for sale and the wife's she doesn't like that, but uh, if anybody wants to come over and look at it, just give me a call or message me and then come see it. No problem. And when I get it done, you can come for a ride. Anyway, talk to you guys later. I hope you like this kind of stuff, but uh, yeah, I'm rambling again. But uh, yeah, that's all I got to say, I guess, right now. Anyway, if you like this kind of thing, okay, guys, give me a thumbs up, thumbs down, and please always comment. I try to answer them all. Right now, things are a little bit hectic with the wife still being sick, but getting better. Um, so we're heading for Toronto next week for a consultation for the stem cell. So as long as she stays in remission before she gets to Toronto for the stem cell transplant, she should be home before Christmas, hopefully. It, it's anywhere from three weeks to two months in there. But you have to get there first and there's like a month and a half or two month waiting period to get the stem cell transplant done. So that's the next hurdle. Anyway, guys. Talk to you later. Please rate, comment, and subscribe always. Oh yeah, I still have uh, spark plugs and spark plug wires to buy for it. So I got a million things to do. Hook the alternator up, wiring, but anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. One thing at a time.